What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called... Kevin Compilation, Lake Erie Edition. I've posted about a Kevin from school. Now how about a Kevin in my own family? The corruption is spreading. My brother has a son, and that son is a Kevin if you've ever seen one. He's not mentally handicapped in any way, just dumb as a rock and even less tactful. My uncle has a house on the shore of Lake Erie in Canada, and it's tradition for everyone in the family and their spouses and offspring, if applicable, to visit during the summer. Enter my nephew Kevin. I see him at uncle's house in holidays. Holidays and birthdays, he acts normalish, but summers at the lake are where Kevin releases the beast within. His Kevin dumb didn't express itself to the fullest until he turned 12 three years back, so I have three summers of Kevin tidbits to share here. Kevin seems to like urinating in strange places for no freaking reason. Uncle lives up there and loves it, but he's rather finicky about people tracking sand in his house and a large extended family wandering the lightly sanded backyard in beachside dunes collects sand. So uncle puts a rug and a plastic tub full of water at his back door and everyone washes their feet before going inside. Except Kevin, who my brother caught pissing in the footbath one day. His excuse? Great uncle doesn't like sand in his house, so I won't go in the house. Kevin once got a few cousins to bury him up to his neck in sand. He had to kneel because you can't dig that far on Erie's beach before you hit clay. So Kevin was up to his neck in sand and stayed there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. He had a cousin bring him a bowl of goldfish for lunch, which he ate with his mouth. Oh, and he pissed in the sand because he was too lazy to dig out. The final straw was two summers ago, when Kevin climbed a tree and urinated on his great aunt because she made him eat a salad. Kevin is also a massive schlong to literally everyone. Kevin punched his sister while they were watching a baseball game because the team she was rooting for was beating his favorite team. Kevin likes to throw stones at seagulls. A lot. One day, Uncle set up a lawn chair in the surf so he could sip his beer and let the water rush over his feet. Kevin ran up behind him and pushed the chair over. Then he said he thought it was his dad. Uncle is bald and a foot taller than my brother who has thick brown hair and was still in bed. Kevin bought a Diablo from a Walmart and used it to whip his cousins. Kevin threw some of my sister's laundry in the lake because it was taking up space on uncle's clothesline that he needed for his towel and swim trunks and shirt. Yes, Kevin believes in swim shirts. Yes, he has god-awful tan lines by the end of summer. Kevin likes to sit by the lakeside away from the rest of the family so he can hurl racial slurs at passers-by without us hearing. He thinks it's hilarious and we just don't get meme culture. FML. Sexual Deviant Kevin Kevin spent an entire summer trying to find a seashell big enough to fit his penis. Legend has it, he's still searching. Two summers ago, Kevin and his brother had a room with a balcony. Kevin climbed from this balcony to the roof, where he leaned over and used his phone camera to record the interior of his female cousin's room while they were changing into their bathing suits. He got caught when Uncle decided to hose down his sighting that morning. I can still hear Kevin's yowls of pain. Kevin wakes up at 5 a.m. each morning so he can Jonathan off in the shower until 6 a.m., which is when more people wake up and the showers are in high demand. Uncle made a key lime pie. There was one slice left until Kevin stuck his Richard in it. Kevin has a Wii U. His favorite use for it is using its web browser to access Cornhub. The gamepad screen has a layer of whitish crust on it. I woke up one morning to the sight of Kevin humping a tree in the yard. He saw me on my balcony and threw an acorn at me while screaming, Screw you! Above all, Kevin has remarkably poor judgment, a lazy disposition, and non-existent common sense. Kevin found a spare tire that someone was throwing out. 
he decided to make a tire swing. The rope was attached to the tire perfectly, but instead of hanging it from a tree branch or a balcony, Kevin hung it from uncle's clothesline. I was in the kitchen with my aunt working on dinner when we heard a scream of terror and saw the clothesline, Kevin, and tire in tow, tumbling towards the beach. The nails for the clothesline had been ripped right out of the trees. Kevin saw his father and I starting a fire in Uncle's fire pit for the evening s'mores. Kevin found the bag of charcoal that Uncle keeps by his grill and threw charcoal like snowballs at the fire. My brother and I were lucky to keep our eyebrows. Kevin was rolling with laughter when we got up. He quickly found us to be less amused. My wife and I had volunteered to take care of the week's groceries one afternoon. So we were heading off to the local corner store and the nearest Walmart for an hour or so. I had been grilling some corn cobs for afternoon snacking and or dinner and asked Kevin if he could remove them in five minutes and set them on the picnic table. When we returned an hour later, we found that Kevin had gone inside to play Splatoon and neglected the corn. Good thing we bought more. Uncle had gone exploring in his garage and found a few of those awesome paper lanterns that you light up and let go. We had been sending them up over the lake one starry night when Kevin joined the party. Not only did he set his arm hair on fire while lighting a lantern and run to the lake screaming bloody murder, but he later found my archery enthusiast sister's longbow and decided to take pot shots. He had to give her some of his money to replace the arrows he fired into Lake Erie. My brother had purchased a big old multi-person pool float before the trip and inflated it on the beach to try on the lake. To prevent drifting, he attached a rope to the float and the other end to some metal weights from Uncle's garage, the Trevor Trove of yard toys and power tools. Kevin had decided to jump in the lake and play with his makeshift anchor, dropping it on his foot in the process. During his death throes, he tripped on a sandbar three times and jumped onto the float with such force that his younger cousins at the end were flung off. A highlight of our time is having super soaker battles in the lake. My older brother used to be a Navy SEAL and messes up everyone, but it's still a fun time. Uncle keeps score from the shore, uses his garden hose on the ex-SEAL to give us a fighting chance, and awards the winners the biggest piece of pie. It's a ton of fun because seaweed, sandbars, and water in general make movement weird and you have infinite reloads anywhere. Sometimes we play King of the Hill with the pool float. Anyways, last summer, Kevin decided that he needed an edge, so he filled his super soaker with sand from the lake in addition to water. He thought it would spray out all shotgun-like and cut up people's skin. Instead, he clogged his gun and sat there shaking it and swearing while everyone else even his teammates sprayed him down. One rainy day, Kevin decided to be the next Ben Franklin and attach the keys to Uncle's shed to a kite. Lightning cracked and Kevin got scared and ran inside and let go of the freaking kite. Uncle spent the next morning at the locksmith. That's everything as far as I recall. If I remember any more mishaps, I'll put them in the comments. Have a good day and don't be like my nephew. Okay, so first off, the thing about Kevin enjoying peeing in random places. Honestly, I can understand that. There have been a few situations where uh, there have been emergencies and I've had to pee. And so, you know, I'm forced to find a creative place to pee. And then it became a little bit of a hobby for a little while. Okay, I don't do this anymore. Okay, but like when I was like 15, 13, 14, 15, I would, um, I would try to find creative places to pee. Nowhere bad that I'm not supposed to pee, but just interesting places. And I found that peeing outside is a lot more enjoyable than peeing indoors. I don't know why. The freedom and the airflow, I guess. I don't know. Also, the crust on the Wii U gamepad. Okay, I don't know if you've ever freaking had a Nintendo touchscreen or at least the type of touchscreen, the, the dual air, where they have the, the gas in between the, the actual display and that plastic thing and you touch, that's how... Okay, you get what I'm saying. So the Wii U uh, has one of those screens and I don't know about you, but the DS and the Wii U, those touchscreens, they get really dirty, really easy with crusty white stuff that I'm assuming is dried saliva from everyone being nasty and spitting on their screens and not cleaning it. Also, Kevin, uh, we don't take light of actual predatory behavior, sir. You peeping Tom, you, you stealth recorder. That can get you in trouble. This story's called Kevin Screwed Himself Over. This particular Kevin is more of an irate butthole who tends to run off at the mouth. He's also one I'm stuck working with. 
You see, Kevin is one of those people who complains and moans about just about everything. For context, he's a forklift driver and complains about having to do it, despite the fact that he asked to do it. Kevin thinks everyone is also an idiot, despite the fact that everything he says is straight up ignorant and stupid. He also can't count to save his life either and gets irate when someone tells him his counts are way off. Anyway, I've been working my current job for the last three months. I had naturally started as a temp and was getting along with pretty much everyone and was making a good impression on everyone around me. About my third day was when I had my first run-in with Kevin. A fellow coworker had moved a box of plastic to the end of the aisle and went to find a spot to put it away in. Kevin came barreling down the aisle on his forklift and ran into it. He starts cursing and asking who the heck put it there, all the while continually bashing into it with his forklift, over and over. I happened to be right there at that moment and was willing to move it out of the way, if he'd stop bashing it with his forklift. My other coworker had come back and yanked it out of the way before Kevin completely destroyed it. Kevin looks at me and screams at me, and you just freaking stand there! Like it's my fault it's there to begin with and I should have risked getting hurt to try and move it while he's hitting it with a big ass forklift. I just rolled my eyes and said, whatever you say dude. After that, I made it a point to just avoid him altogether. I have little patience for stupidity or buttholes, much less a stupid butthole. Unfortunately, such a person tends to insert themselves into any given situation they see fit. So it came to pass that last week the company I worked for decided to promote me to full time and asked me to come in an hour early for orientation. I did so and arrived about 10 minutes early. Kevin was at the door, standing on the steps. I walked past and opened the door to go inside and Kevin, in his usual disgruntled manner, asked what the heck I was doing. Mind you, our company does temperature checks at the door due to the Modelo panic, just inside the door. I turned around and explained, calmly, that I was told to be in at that time and I would hail somebody inside for my temperature check before proceeding to my orientation. Kevin proceeded to go off on a tangent saying, I don't freaking care who you are or why the heck you're here. You wait out here like the freaking rest of us. God damn. I'd finally had it, but kept it as mild as I could. All right, all right, calm the heck down. Jesus Christ and back down the stairs. Someone came to the door shortly after and took Kevin's temperature and then mine. I made it in on time and kept what happened to myself. Kevin, however, couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was in the break room and was running off at the mouth about the incident and happened to do so in front of the HR lady doing my orientation. Kevin apparently told her I was trying to cut him in line. Mind you, he was just standing like he was chilling and trying to bypass getting my temperature check. So she questioned me about it, because when she asked who it was, Kevin said, Some freaking temp? So she put two and two together. I explained what had happened and what was said, as she wanted verbatim what Kevin said and my response. I simply told her that given this wasn't the first time, my response wasn't exactly cordial either. I was just trying to get in on time and make sure that I got someone's attention so that I could get to my orientation on time, as I was told. She was pretty understanding of my response and none too happy about Kevin's, stating it poorly represented a hospitable work environment, especially on my first day as a full-timer. I even told her that I wasn't going to make a big deal about it. She said no need. Kevin did that himself. This isn't the first time Kevin has started something like this with somebody, and specifically temps. But since temps are usually disregarded on basic principle in regards to complaints against full-timers, they kind of just get pushed to the side. However, I was now a full-time employee and it brought validity to all those other former complaints. Individually, both HR and my supervisor pulled Kevin into their offices and ripped him a new one. Kevin has been giving me dirty looks for the last week, like I snitched him out despite the fact that he couldn't keep his mouth shut. At some point, Kevin walked by me and whispered, Snitch. I just turned around and said, Kevin, I didn't say crap about what happened until they came up and asked me about it because you ran your mouth off about it. You can blame me all you want, but it's your mouth that got you into this mess 100%, so maybe now might be the best time to shut it. 
and turned around and walked away. Kevin wisely keeps his mouth shut around me now, but he's not exactly learning that lesson with everyone else because a bunch of people are making complaints about him being that way to them. I don't see Kevin staying there much longer. So, the lesson to be learned here? Don't be that idiot running off at the mouth and quit while you're ahead. And don't be an idiotic butthole. Man, sometimes I really despise YouTube's demonetization uh, policies and whatnot, because sometimes I want to read that last line with a no-no word so that I can sound badass. But anyways, yeah, Kevin sounds like the very type of person everyone ever has always hated for the history of the entire world ever and universe ever. Calling you a snitch when he got in trouble. Oh my god, that's just, the concept is frustrating and kudos to OP here for having the maturity and patience to not blow up. This story's called, Kevin is a genius, kills dry and artificial plants, creates black mold and nearly kills us both in the process. Kevin has been one of my closest friends since college. Absolute genius, top of his undergrad and business school courses, high flying consultant, etc, etc. It would all be truly nauseating if he weren't such an amazing guy. We were flatmates for a while in London, literally the perfect person to live with. Tidy, fun, but also understood boundaries. How could he possibly be a Kevin, you ask? At one point, when we were living together, I went for a three-week adventure holiday, so was pretty much out of contact. The UK is so much better on holiday allowance than the US, but I digress. Anyway, I asked Kevin to take care of my plants while I was gone. Seemed a simple task. Gave Kevin clear instructions to water them every couple of days and rough amounts of water needed. Came back and the dear boy seemed very guilty. Sorry, but I think I may have killed some of your plants. I watered them as you said, but something may have went wrong. I walked in and looked around at my plants, figuring he may have forgotten a couple of days or something. Well, he had killed a couple of live plants, fair enough, things happen, right? But then I started smelling this god-awful smell in a couple of places. Couldn't figure it out. Mr. Tidy, remember? Turns out, Kevin had watered all of my dried plants. Think bundles of sculptural sticks, etc. A bit of fake ivy where I was trying to make an ugly window ledge look pretty. He'd watered them diligently, every two days for three weeks. Pools of vile water in the bottom of their containers, like some sort of semi-sentient primordial ooze that absolutely reeked. Black mold creeping up the sides of the containers and on the bases of the plants that yielded clouds of spores when I pulled them out. Black mold being toxic, of course, so was a bit scary. Had to trash plants, containers, etc. in case they very likely would make us sick. Turns out my dear, sweet, genius Kevin had noticed the dank hellhole smell but thought that was probably normal for plants at some point in their lives and didn't want to let me down by not watering. So he lived in our veritable plague farm of a flat for all three weeks suffering in silence. I really had to struggle not to die laughing. Kevin was so earnest and had tried so hard, but good lord, sometimes even geniuses can be idiots. <laughs> it's funny, Kevins are out here min-maxing in real life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.